أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين جاءوا بالإفك أسبة منكم لا تحسبوه شرا لكم بل هو خير لكم لكل امرئ منهم ما اكتسب من الإثم والذي تولى كبره منه منهم له عذاب عظيم إلى قوله تعالى ولولا استميتموه قلتم ما يكون لنا أن نتكلم بهذا سبحانك هذا بركان عظيم Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. My topic for tonight is defending the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, defending our deen, defending our faith. In Surah An-Nur, Ayah number 11 to Ayah 17, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily those who brought forth this land against Aisha, radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are group among you. Consider it not bad thing for you. No, it is, nay, it is good for you. Unto every man among them will be paid that which he had earned of the sin. Subhanallah. If this can happen at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, this hadith, the story of this ayah, the hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. I urge brothers and sisters to go through it. It was one of the journey when Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was left behind. He went to answer the call of the nature. By the time she came, the group already left. And people started to spread the rumor, saying that she had committed adultery. Waliyadu billah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent her home to her parents. And he waited and waited and waited until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah. Stating it, it was wrong. This was during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nowadays, what we see or what we hear is that some, I will call them enemies within, who see themselves as Muslims, they question why is the Prophet allowed to have? Why was he allowed to have more than four wives? Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Quran, in Surah Al-Anbiya, ayah number 23 or 22, La yus'alu amma yaf'alu hum yus'alun. Allah will never be questioned on what he does, but we, mankind, are the one to be questioned. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to legislate anything, He does it. We have no right to question Him or to ask why. For some, they took it. Okay, I'm sure. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had more than four. I'm allowed to have 10, 11, 12, 15. Subhanallah. What the enemies of Islam and people of this time, what they are missing out, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted him to do it, of course, he did this for three reasons. One, for political reason. Two, for social reason. Second, for humanitarianism. They question, why did he marry Aisha when, when she was nine? She was so young. He, was, he must be a humanizer. Subhanallah. You hear these words uttering from a mouth of people who see themselves as Mashaikh, Mufti, Muslims. Subhanallah. During that time, 
It was known among the Arabs, women at that age, to attain puberty at that age. And it was known naturally for women at that age to get married, not only among the Arabs, but among the Romans and among the Parisians. Why only addressing this toward Islam or toward the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam only? Also, what are we stop behind it? Look at the age of Khadija, the time he married her. She wasn't that young. He also, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he married Sauda, radiallahu anha, when she was 80, 80 years old. Today, if a man says, I'm going to marry to someone who said, oh, mashallah, how old is she? 18? 20? Max? No, she's 18. No, man, you must be crazy. You marry her today and you marry her tomorrow. You see? And some other young woman, Ula Armanatim for Islam, the first widow in Islam, Radio Allah Ta'ala Anha, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to respect her and to show her the right of woman, not of the right of the woman. Today's politicians are talking about, or is this listening about. So for him to have number of wives, that was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's granted him to do so and also it was permitted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was for Aisha radiallahu ta'ala at that age to grow up and to learn about this deal and which she attained. She knew many Messiah in fact many of these Sahabas they didn't know. That is why it is very important for us to know this, so that when stories are such as said, we can say, hey, hang on. This were the reason, this were the wisdom behind it. Recently, you might read or hear from the media referring to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or to the Muslims as terrorists. We say, no, that is not right. We will defend our deen. Anyone comes to our home and to our land, do we humbly give our necks? Come on, slaughter me. Take my daughter. Kill my sons. Take my wives. Do we do that? No, of course. You see, the Sahabas, the like of Talha ibn Ubaidullah, Abu Bakr, Umar ibn al-Khattab, they all defended Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We can do the same today. Yes, he passed away, we cannot defend him physically, but I can use my tongue and saying to the people who are calling him as a terrorist, okay, tell me or show me a country he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went and invaded. Name me one person he killed. Did he start the First World War? The Second World War? Who bombed the Japanese? Who took Palestine from its owners? In Afghanistan, in Shishan, who took those lands from its rightful owners? 
You see, some who see themselves or who call themselves as Muslims today, they are saying that Mecca and Medina should be given to the United Nations so that the United Nations will send in troops to guard it. Subhanallah. They want to take it from the Wahhabiyin. As they say. What these people forget, when the so-called United Nations was formed, no Muslim nation was consulted. No, they were allowed to be involved. We don't have to be dumb. Let's open our eyes. Let's read the history and see. How many permanent members in it among the Muslims? None. The weapons they call in, that they have it, but they don't want other people or other Muslims to have it. Why? Is this United Nations or Divided Nation? Call it whatever you want. Who have the veto to say to them, you cannot go and attack this, but you can go and attack this. You see, if, if country have got a problem, got oil, they will find all the ways to go and end it. If the country doesn't have any petrol, the like of Zimbabwe, they will allow people to lead and kill and kill and kill and kill. No, we are not interfering, nothing to do with us. Brothers and sisters, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Afterward, he mentioned in the Quran, Wallahu a'lam haythu yajalu risalatah. Allah knows where he will put his messenger boat. Recently, 12th of May, in the New Zealand Herald, there was a topic about the Pentagon. They were conducting a course for the top-ranked military officers who will give, who advises the leaders on anything relating to wars. They were training certain individuals on how to go and bomb both Mecca and Medina without taking care of any woman or children or anyone in the heaven, any of this month. So when we see or hear someone attacking the Prophet sallallahu directly, he or they are attacking us. Don't think that, okay, I'm in New Zealand, I'm safe. Believe me, you. They will start slaughtering Muslims everywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in Surah Al-Isra Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to establish the truth to make it firm and he will destroy the wrong and the wrongdoers, even if the kuffar, even if they hate it. How will I defend the prophet or my deen or myself if I'm too shy to be known my name is Muhammad? Or if I'm too shy to dress like this? Or if I'm too shy to grow my beard? Or if I'm too shy to ask my boss, look, I need to take a break, I need five minutes. I'm just going to perform my daily prayer. How will I defend the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or my deen if this is my status? I leave that with you and with myself to think of. Allah subhanahu wa taala 
When he chose the Prophet وسلم, he sent him as a rahmah as a mercy for the entire creation. During one of the battles, the Sahabas, they were defending him, coming in front so that the bullet or whatever has been sent to him to hit him can get to them, not him. We don't have to do that today. Today it is more easier than that. When we hear someone criticizing this dean and saying, you know, women are always allowed to wear like this and, you know, they are terrorized, we have to defend it. For the sake of Allah, we live in a so-called free country. We need to be strong and put our head high and say, you are dressing the way you are dressing because you wanted it. Nobody is forcing you to do it. Our sisters, our wives, our daughters, they are doing the same. Nobody is forcing them to do it. It is part of our deed, part of our belief, respect it. But when I'm shy or I'm too afraid, there is no way I will do that. When we hear people trying to destroy the Sunnah, I'll give one example. The Adhan al Maghrib. After the Adhan, the Sahabas they used to rush and go and pray two light rakats, which is Sunnah. Today, among us are Muslims who, when you tell them this is Sunnah, no, we cannot do that. That is rubbish. Ya Akhi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it. It is in Sayyid Bukhari. No. After Azhar straight away, go and do the Iqama. What other Sunnah they will try to rubbish out and say, no, we are not going to do it. You see? Slowly, 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 they live one by one, one by one. The end, they will say, okay, I've got, I have got to a stage, I don't have to pray anymore. Or I have got to a stage, I just need to go and pray without wudu. Or I have got to a stage, I've become so mufti, O maulana, O mullah, when I urinate, come and use it as a wudu and go and pray, Allah will accept you. Believe me, brothers, there are people who believe this. I'm not faking it by Allah. And yet, they say Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it. He never said it. You come to them with something of Quran and Sunnah. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said and this is what he ordered us to do. No, this is rubbish. You know, in our locality, we don't do this, or in my country, we don't do this. And yet, when your tribe is attacked, you fight for it. You see, between the Hutus and the Tutsis, the civil war started for minor things. They started calling each other cockroaches. Since then, they've been fighting. Since then they've been fighting. And yet, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is abused, or the deen is abused, or framed, people don't feel sad, they don't feel bad about it. You know, I'm not a sheikh, I'm not going to talk about it. You know, it doesn't bother me. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in iman, and amal, and understanding this deen, and following the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه ربنا إننا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى ربنا إننا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين والصلاة والأيقاع في الله سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته